Hello guys, today I will share the life cycle assessment of chewing gum. In this video we will learn about 1. Introduction 2. Life cycle of chewing gum 3. Impact of chewing gum 4. Conclusion Introduction About 9,000 years ago, Northern Europeans chewed for entertainment and therapeutic uses such as relieving toothaches. In the late 1840s, John Curtis developed the first commercial spruce tree gum by boiling resin, then cutting it into strips that were coated in cornstarch to prevent them from sticking together. By the late 1880s, according to Matthews, was making gum sold across the country. Chicle, imported to the United States from Mexico and Central America, served as the main ingredient in chewing gum until most manufacturers replaced it with synthetic ingredients by the mid-1900s. After moving to Chicago in 1891, he began offering store owners incentives to stock his products, such as free cans of baking powder with every order. When the baking powder proved a bigger hit than the soap, Wrigley sold that instead and added in free packs of chewing gum as a promotion. In 1893, he launched two new gum brands, Juicy Fruit and Wrigley's Spearmint. Because the chewing gum field had grown crowded with competitors, Wrigley decided he'd make his product stand out by spending heavily on advertising and direct marketing. In 1915, the Wrigley company kicked off a campaign in which it sent free samples of its gum to millions of Americans listed in phone books. Another promotion entailed sending sticks of gum to U.S. children on their second birthday. Life Cycle of Chewing Gum Here is the topic for the life cycle assessment of chewing gum. 1. Raw Material Extraction 2. Manufacturing 3. Distribution 4. Usage 5. End of Life Raw Material Ingredients Modern chewing gum is composed of gum base, preservatives, sweeteners, softeners, plasticizers, and flavoring. Synthetic polymer polyvinyl acetate is regularly used in chewing gum bases, it makes up almost 60% of the gum base. Gum Base Traditional extraction of chicle from Chico Zapote tree, Acres Zapota, in Quintana Roo, Mexico. This way of extracting by making zigzag incisions is known since ancient Mayan civilization who call it sicte. Sweeteners. The production process involves melting the gum base ingredients together, followed by mixing in the other ingredients. The mixture is then extruded, shaped, conditioned to achieve the desired texture, cooled, and eventually wrapped. 1. Aspartame. Aspartame is an artificial sweetener made from two amino acids, phenylalanine and aspartic acid. 2. Stevia. This natural sweetener is made from the leaves of the stevia plant. 3. Sugar alcohols. The most used sugar alcohols in sugar-free gum are xylitol, isomaltose, maltitol, mannitol, and sorbitol. Sugar alcohols come from berries and other fruits. Softeners. Softeners, such as glycerin or vegetable oil, are added to chewing gum to retain moisture and increase the flexibility of the gum. It is these ingredients used which help to soften the gum when placed into the warmth of your mouth and create the characteristic chewing gum texture. Softeners are added to retain moisture. The most popular softeners are glycerin or vegetable oil based. Those ingredients are used to help prevent the gum from becoming hard or too stark. Sweeteners are added to gum to give it that sweet flavor. Those ingredients are usually sugar, corn syrup, and even beet juice. Manufacturing Manufacturing Many manufacturers of chewing gum secretly guard specific ingredients in their chewing gum, but they all share the same basic process to reach their finished product. The manufacturing process is considered standard throughout the industry. Step by step. 1. Making gum begins by preparing a gum base. If gum base is natural, it must first be harvested and processed. The process begins by melting and purifying the gum base. 
The gum base is placed in a warm room to dry for a day or two, hot air continually passes over the mixture. The gum base is then sterilized and melted in a steam cooker. 2. The substance is then pumped to a high-powered centrifuge to rid the gum base of undesirable dirt and bark. The gum base is cooked and mixed with softeners and sweeteners, and all other additives. 3. The next step is kneading. Extruders, machines, are used to blend, smooth, and form the gum. A cutting machine cuts the sheets into sticks or small pellets which are later candy coated. 4. Other machines then carefully wrap and package the gum in airtight wrappers. All types of chewing gum are made pretty much the same way. The gum base for bubble gum is a rubberier to make it stretch without tearing. For candy coated gums, there is an additional process. Gumballs are soaked in a sucrose solution, dried, and rubbed with beeswax. Gums with liquid centers are filled with sweet liquid candy. 3. Distribution management is the process used to oversee the movement of goods from supplier to manufacturer to wholesaler or retailer and finally to the end consumer. Move goods from manufacturer to wholesalers, retailers, or buyers. However, the transportation used can be potential negative impacts on the environment. For example, degradation of air quality, greenhouse gas emissions, and increased threat of global climate change. Usage Do you guys know chewing gum has a very short lifespan? People chew gum for 30 minutes on average before spitting it out. This half an hour produces much less energy than its producers during the production process. Chewing gum is short-lived and frequently tossed on the ground. Typically, people go throw a pack a day. People usually chuck a pack a day. Annually, 3.74 sticks of gum are produced. End of life. To help reduce the growing strain on the world's environment we would like to encourage everyone who chews gum to recycle it. By simply dropping your chewing gum into a gumdrop bin your small effort will go towards making a huge change. Putting chewing gum into a standard bin may keep our streets clean, however it will not be recycled and will end up in landfill. When used chewing gum is thrown on the floor the repercussions are expansive. The best way to ensure your chewing gum is recycled efficiently and responsibly, is to drop it into a gumdrop. Gumdrop along with its contents of used chewing gum is recycled and processed into new gumdrops which are then redistributed, so that the cycle can start again. Impact of chewing gum What happens when you're done chewing it? 80-90% to 90 of chewing gum is not disposed of properly and it's the second most common form of litter after cigarette butts. Chewing gum is made from polymers which are synthetic plastics that do not biodegrade. When it's tossed on the sidewalk, there it sits until it's removed which can be a costly, time-consuming process. Littered gum can also make its way into the food chain. It has been found in fish where it can accumulate toxins over time. Sustainable chewing gums have been produced. Cities are also implementing gum receptacles to cut down on waste. In a six-month period these trash cans cut down on littered gum by 72%. Chewing gum can be dangerous and toxic to any animal that consumes it. Animals like birds could mistake the gum for food and get killed when they choke on gum or when it clogs up their digestive system. Conclusion Some countries, like Singapore, have already started to crack down on bubble gum, banning it unless people have a medical reason to be chewing it. Even without a government ban, though, it's possible to be an environmentally conscious gum chewer. The volume of waste created by littering is not entirely insignificant. Worldwide, humans chew about 560,000 tons of gum each year, according to one study. A few entrepreneurial greenies have developed technology to recycle chewed gum, which they can turn into rubber containers and children's toys. 
but that means chewers would have to throw their used gum into specially designated waste containers, rather than into ordinary trash bins. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and watch our next video.